Hey guys, what's going on my YouTube fam? It's your boy, Dirty Boy. Well, I uh, left my camera at the house, so we're doing it old school. Just give me a little short video today and stuff like that. But, that case action, I called at least, fuck, 15 to 20 salvage yards for that. Nobody has one nowhere. Um, buddy, my Michael Kelly and stuff like that, like I told you about, gave me a two-page list. And I called every one of them numbers. And, man, these guys, I call them up and they want to be assholes. They keep telling me, oh, no, we ain't going to ship it and stuff like that. We're not going to do that. But if you call a shipping carrier and stuff, we'll put it on the truck. Well, will you weigh it for me? No. Then how the hell do I supposed to do that? So, um, I went on eBay, and there's a black one on there, and, uh, I took and messaged them on, uh, on, uh, eBay, off of eBay, and had them call me and stuff like that, and they did, and I talked to them and stuff, and they're in Pensacola, Florida, and I want to give a big shout out to them guys, they're called, uh, Fairfield Auto in Pensacola, Florida, and, uh, 180 with shipping kind of squeezed a few things and stuff like that and everything and uh you're supposed to have it out tomorrow and shipping it to me wednesday so big shout out to fairfield auto y'all guys that was the most polite guys ever i mean i'm serious it was unreal when i started calling all them guys in texas them i didn't act like they wouldn't even talk to me you know i'm acting asking for a damn suzuki Aereo and stuff like that. They asked if I want to fuck their mama. It's like, no, nah, I'm just looking for a part. Seriously. It was just, uh, just kind of unreal and stuff like that. How two states are suddenly different. I mean, almost every one of the people that I talked to there in Texas just seemed like they had a real nasty ass attitude. I don't know why. Few people were nice though. I say a few people were nice and stuff like that. But yeah, there was just a few just. What the fuck? But, uh, yeah. So that was a good thing. Uh, I was really worried about this thing, guys. I was actually am because, uh, oh, Holly Berry out there, I think she's got a slight bloat of a head gasket. Um, I threw some head gasket sealer in it, um, uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. And, uh, yeah, I can still smell antifreeze when I'm driving it, so. I really want to park her and drive this just through the winter. So, yeah. So now I got that and everything, and I got a muffler somewhere. I just got to find it. But on this thing here, I, I uh, got a gift given to me. And uh got some gauges gift to me. See that there? But, uh... Yeah, y'all see, uh, like, especially the oil. Yeah, yeah, see that? The, uh, there's the temp. It's all, uh, wired. Um, I've never seen a gla gauges like this. I'm always used to the old school. I don't have a fuel gauge, so, I mean, I guess that was just something that they put in here. But it's going to be interesting and stuff. I kind of like that because now I don't have to run hoses or stiff-ass lines or none of that shit. So hopefully it works out pretty well. The sensor and stuff is actually that size that goes on there. So um, that's actually going to be interesting, except I need to find some wire now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then we can get this thing back together and get it running again. But today I am going to put the exhaust manifolds on. Yeah, we'll definitely need to do that. All right, guys, I'll be back. All right, guys, I was looking at the exhaust here. Man, ain't this just some funky shit they got going on here? I mean, I looked and it's like, what the hell size is that? Like one and seven eighths? You know, and then... 
I go over here to the original exhaust to this car, or the original exhaust manifold to this car, and I mean technically they're basically the same damn size. Yeah, basically the same damn size, same thickness in here. So I mean, I really uh, wished I had some. Uh, Kind of wish I had some headers for it, but I just don't have that kind of cash right now. But I'm guessing this is the exhaust right here that came out underneath it. So I'm guessing they just chopped it off right there. So I should be able to put those exhaust manifolds on, put the uh, pipe on there, and then that should just butt up against it and weld it. I'm just... Oh, man, I just, uh, that just does not look right. I mean, but what do I have to do for right now? Huh, but yeah, I'm guessing right there before they just hacked it off. So, all right, let me, uh, Take these bolts off here and we'll get these slapped on. Alright guys, got them off. Surprisingly, the damn nuts actually came off really easy. I was surprised. I thought I was going to have to go for the Gusco. Yeah, they're not too bad. Um, I might see if that tool I got will port these. Kind of ground down that nipple right there. Try to get some more airflow out of these. Try to get the airflow restriction up out of them, you know what I'm saying? And then clean them up. Yeah, I really, I really don't want to put these on neither, guys. I really don't, but right now, with it getting closer to winter, it, it seems like that, uh, yeah, the funds are short. I still got to at least do an oil change in this thing, and I think I have the oil for this thing. I say, I just want to get this damn thing on the road. I got really lucky on that K-frame. I really did. Um, yeah, to tell you the truth, guys, I'm more positive that a mechanic shop, actually, I know a hunt for 100% fact, a mechanic shop that had to go through as much trouble as I did, and they wouldn't go through as much trouble as I did to find one. They would just go out there and just try to, you know, try to get one, and I think that mechanic shops will have such a hard time finding this part that they would just tell you it's junk because there is not one uh in michigan at all if y'all don't believe me look it up 2004 suzuki aereo rear k section rear k frame i'm gonna tell you there's not one in the state of michigan not one um they did say that there was one in um one one and uh, I think it was Ohio, I think it was. None in Wisconsin. None at all in Wisconsin. Um, this place might have been in Wisconsin. It was in Wisconsin. There was none in Ohio. Uh, there was one in uh, Wisconsin. And uh, that, that dude there, he was kind of a, a dick too. He was like, uh, um, no, he would not ship it. You know, uh, you know, it was a six and a half hour drive to there. Uh, yes, he only wanted $75 for it plus tax. Um, of course, the trip to do, you know, uh, I think it was six hours there, so it would be 12 hours round trip. So I'd have, with gas and everything, plus you got to eat, you know, probably a couple times being, uh, you know, being a 12-hour drive round trip, you know, six hours there, six hours back. So, yeah, you know, you're probably going to eat a couple times and gas, time and all that shit. So, yeah, I'd be well over 180 and, um, yeah, the guy, uh, would not ship it. Um, I don't even think he would send me any pictures or nothing. He was kind of another, just kind of, a, you know, asshole, you know. I guess nobody wants to make any money like that, I guess. I'm, I hope. All right, guys, guess I'm going to have to do it this way then. I just, uh, downloaded probably about 10 minutes of footage and, lo and behold, somebody texts me and the damn phone screws up. Yes, I forgot my camera at the house. It sucks. But, 
I always want to try to give y'all some entertainment and stuff at least once a day, if not once every other day. Anyways, let's start this shit again, shall we? All right. I got the uh, exhaust manifolds taken off, like it's in the previous video. Uh, the nuts actually came off really well. I want to do some... Uh, I'm going to try to do some, um, I said I said the uh, right word and stuff like that in the first video. There we go. I'm going to try to uh, grind these little humps down right here so I can get a little bit more airflow through here. Port and polish a little bit, you know, clean these up a little bit. I really hate to put these on and stuff, but I don't have the money for the right uh, exhaust. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, like... I don't really like uh, the way exhaust is looking and stuff like that, but, you know, what can I do? But I was looking at this here, and it looks like they just cut it off right there. So it's an exhaust. I can just throw it on. Ain't no big deal. So, yeah, we're just going to do it like that. And I got a K section coming. Um... I called uh, my buddy Mikey down there in Texas, gave me a two-page list of uh, junkyards down there in Texas, and I called them and stuff like that, and uh, man, it seemed like this. some of them guys were assholes to me. I mean, there was a few nice ones and stuff like that, but there were some guys just fucking dicks, and uh, you know, and then, you know, I'm not racist or anything, I'm not, but you know... If you're going to own a business in America, you have to at least be bilingual like, you know, every other uh, culture is. And, uh, you know, when you call a place and stuff like that, and the guy speaks to you in Spanish, I, you know, I don't live in Mexico. I'm sorry, I don't understand it, you know. And the guy Lily seemed like he got an attitude because I didn't understand Spanish. And it's just like, this is America. Yeah, just, eh. But, anyways, I got a case section for this thing, guys. Uh, I got it from Pensacola, Florida. Um, Fairfield Auto. And uh, they're in Pensacola, Florida. So, if y'all need anything in Fairfield, uh, call Fairfield Auto in Pensacola, Florida. Um, guys were really nice and stuff like that. They sold me one of these for $180 um, with shipping. And I'm going to tell you guys, uh, there is no places up here at all that has MK frames. Nowhere in Michigan or Ohio's got one. There was one in Wisconsin. And that guy, he just seemed like kind of a dick too and stuff like that. He didn't, wouldn't want to ship it or nothing. And then uh, added it up and stuff like that. And just the cost of the driving, the eating and stuff like that. It just wouldn't be worth it. And the mechanic shop wouldn't do that. You know, they're not going to travel to go get your parts. So they would find, you know, the closest, nearest place to get one. And the, the only place that I could find for the longest time to find one, they wanted 580 bucks for that thing. 580 bucks plus shipping. And the shipping was like one ninety something, so yeah, six hundred bucks for that. So yeah, the mechanic shop would have just told them to junk it. So uh, you know that's why I did what I did and stuff like that. I didn't really know it was going to be that hard. I was literally expecting to spend, you know, probably somewhere around four or five hundred dollars for this. I got really lucky by hitting the grindstone. For days on end, guys, I guarantee you I must have called 15, 20 places looking for this thing up here. And I could not find it anywhere. And yeah, I went on eBay, and there's a black one on eBay. And uh, I messaged them, and they called me and stuff like that. And I talked to the guys. Really cool guys. I really appreciate them. Big thumbs up. And like I say, the name of the place is... Oh, Fairfield Auto. Don't worry, that's not my tracking number for it. That is the tracking number for this windshield. Da -da -da -da. Yes. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, guys. 
Y'all got one, y'all, some of y'all guys out there know what I'm talking about. If y'all are doing these projects on a beer budget, and I mean especially something like that on a beer budget, you know damn well that you cannot sleep. You can barely damn eat, especially if you got them parts that are really hard to find and everybody wants an ass load of money. You, it, it's just a constant, where do I find it? Where do I find it? Where do I find it? So, you know, I thought about it long and hard and stuff like that, and I figured, even with this here, if a mechanic shop did spend the time to find this for you in Pensacola, Florida, if they did, then they would probably charge you at least, I would say, around 600 bucks. They would have that big of a markup on that. They would, just because it was that much of a pain in the ass to get. It was. It was hard. It wasn't even fun. So, yeah, I would say parts and labor to strip this whole thing, clean everything up, make sure it'll never happen again, put it in. Oh, yeah, I was right on the money. 1500 to two grand worth of labor all day long. Probably 1500 I'd say 1500 bucks all day long. Yeah, no cheaper. I ain't even playing. All right, I got these exhaust manifolds off. Like I said, I want to get them cleaned up and everything. We're going to get them on here. I really wish I didn't leave my camera at the house, but and I really wish I had some headers. But I was looking at this, and it's actually pretty close. I think that's like one and seven eighths uh, pipe, and I think this here is two inch off of the factory uh, motor and uh, the only thing I noticed different about these is they do not have them humps inside of them so I'm going to try to take those off and uh, need to get this spoiler off so we can get this hatch off get the other hatch on and look at that ass in guys Ooh. man it looks like a car it looks like a car are we going to do it? We going to do it, huh? Ooh, ready? Ooh. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. I am going to make a... I'll probably just tell him to just watch this video, but... Guy and stuff, he's building one of these and stuff like that, and he needs some trim pieces. And there's one there. Um... When I, I am going to build this into a, there's one actually here, a red one, and uh, I actually want to build this into a 4x4 four four, um, truck Camaro, uh, and I want to be able to uh, be able to pull a car trailer with this Camaro, with this on the car trailer, so I can take it to the drag strip. So I'm not trying to sell everything off this car, but I don't need... Like the rear bumper, I'm not going to need that because it's going to be in the way for the receiver hitch for the trailer. Um, I'm not going to need none of the trim because it's it's not going to be like that. So let me see. Also, let's see. I have this trim right here. Because I found the original one right there. And I want to put the original one back on. So I'm not going to need that. Um, I have... There's, um, yeah, there's one piece right there. Where the hell is the other one? Tell me, let me find the other one. Alright, uh, the bottom of this door trim right here. See, that looks real good. This piece here. Not this piece, this piece. And you see that looks real good and stuff. I have the original one here. And I'm going to put that back on. So this one here will be for sale. Oh, see that it's not busted up or anything. Yeah. Boy, I'm proud of that door. Uh, I don't know where the hell I did with the... Uh, I have both, uh, oh, I seriously cannot stand this damn phone. 
I don't know. I like it, but the, I mean, I really like the phone, but the damn battery don't last worth a shit. So I'm gonna charge my battery. I'll be back, guys. All right, guys. My phone decided to uh, charge up a little bit. We are polishing these, porting them out. And as you can see here, you can see these little. That right there, see that right there? That's what we're trying to get out. And as you can see, got all these pretty much sanded out. I'm gonna tell you guys again, if y'all don't got one of these in y'all's workbenches, y'all just don't know what y'all missing. This thing is great. of you old school guys gonna know what this is and stuff like that probably gives a car anywhere between five to fifteen more horsepower but uh, I'm gonna get done with these and stuff like that and I'll be right back just want to show y'all guys what I'm doing all right guys let me show y'all see this right here see how smooth it is and look at this one it's a indention right there that right there is what they put in these exhaust manifolds to restrict airflow for this smog. That's what they did. They did shit like this. So, by grinding this down, gives you faster airflow, which increases the horsepower and the torque. And you see, I got all these all smoothed out. Now, if you want to ask me and stuff like that, how many of the sanding bands that I had to go through for this one right here... One and a half. Just 80 grit. You know, you don't got to get it all the way down. You can see that that still got a little bit of a lump too, but there's a pretty good indention right here in the exhaust manifold. But it's mainly took it. I'll probably get that down a little bit more. But that one right there is smooth. That one's smooth. And that one here is smooth. You know, we just got to get the rest of these out real quick. And I'll be right back. Guys, got that shit done. Look at that. Old hot rod trick. Old hot rodder trick. Alright, we're gonna switch to this one and then we're gonna do some cleaning up and some spraying. Alright, guys, got them all cleaned up a little bit. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. That's how them old school cats got more horsepower out of their old Chevy. Shit, there ain't really nothing in this damn thing. Um, I don't say nothing about high temp. Might have to get some high temp stuff. Actually, there's not even nothing in that can. Put that in the scrap. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't have to get some high temp stuff, but I want to still layer, layer something over it. Oh shit, this is that green shit. Goddamn. Well, I have no damn black left, I guess. So, I guess that's going to have to wait, because, yeah, no. Ain't happening. Oh, I kind of suck, though. So. Alright, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. But, yeah, that's how you, uh... Get more horsepower out of your old Chevy 350 exhaust manifolds. Alright guys, I'll catch y'all later. And uh, tomorrow I will have my camera and we'll put them on this car. Alright, y'all guys have a good one. Later.